Well, hello everyone. My name is Marta Perro, and last year I worked with the group at Media Lab at a very exciting project on the application of split learning in healthcare. Uh, you can find our uh, article on archive. Uh, I'm currently doing my PhD at the Amsterdam University Medical Center, and I'm doing deep learning research on MR imaging for psychiatric patients. Uh, we are always looking to, for ways to improve our data, uh, and with improve, I don't just mean increased samples, but also increased diversity. And that's why I got really excited talking about distributed machine learning and split learning, especially uh, because it's going to solve all of our problems, or at least that's the premise. Um, today we'll talk a bit about the background. Uh, first, I want to make the case that um, distributed machine learning can be really helpful in healthcare um, due to some facts about medical data. Uh, the second thing is that I want to introduce the concept of distributed machine learning um, because it, uh, a better understanding of distributed machine learning will help us understand split learning. Um, and when we have all the background, we can start thinking about um, the the paper that we have on archive. Uh, we did a feasibility study of split learning in healthcare, and I'm gonna show some applications that we made. Um, so first of all, data. I already, already talked about it. Um, currently, I'm working with MR imaging, and we always have too few. So medical sample sizes are really small. Uh, when we think about deep learning, we think about these openly available large data sets. Uh, but in healthcare, um, there, there have been initiatives to open up large data sets, but there's never enough. And for any, it, it's just not workable to set up uh, a new repository for every new uh, research that you want to do. Um, the second thing is that models trained in one data set can often need not be used for others. So the solutions that we're come up, coming up with might be very specific and might not generalize for new problems. And the, the third thing is when you, when you wonder why, if we need all this data, why don't we just share it? Well, there's a lot of hurdles that we have to cross. Um, there's a lot of laws to protect patient privacy. There's regulations to protect, to protect loss of control because the data is actually an asset to the hospital. Um, uh, there's logistics. Some of these data sets are terabytes and terabytes in size and uh, a simple research uh, researcher might not have uh, the location to store it. And uh, lastly, there's ethics because patients have to give consent and we don't know, uh, we cannot just hand out these data sets because we don't know what the, what's gonna happen to it. Um, and the final number that I want you to remember is that only 2.9% of uh, published papers on um, uh, deep learning in healthcare includes data from multiple institutions. And that really hampers the, um, um, application of these methods in healthcare because we cannot um, thoroughly prove the reproducibility. Um, so the second solution immediately that we come to, and that's so far uh, the topic of interest today, is distributed machine learning. Uh, distributed machine learning basically means that we're not training in one centralized location, instead we're doing it distributedly. And I always, there, there, there are several methods um, shown in the bottom left here. Um, called cyclic weight transfer, fit, uh, federated learning and split learning. Uh, and in the back of me, you can already see an image of what, uh, how Google explains federated learning. And they have an example of um, uh, you having um, a keyboard data from Gboard. And that's of course sensitive data that you don't wanna share with the rest of the world. So what happens is that uh, your phone, when it's plugged in at night trains the neural network and every morning it sends an update that is um, uh, uh, that's aggregated at the Google servers. So in this way, uh, training is happening distributedly. And uh, the same thing is what we want to do with split learning, but in a whole different concept. Now we don't do all the training on the distributed devices, but we split up some parts and we send over the uh, features in between. So you can now see in blue that some parts, and those are actually the more shallow parts, are uh, happening distributedly, but the center is happening, uh, happening on the server. Um, so this is another diagram. So you can see several hospitals here and they send over features and gradients, but the data and the labels uh, remain the same so, or remain at the same location. So in this way you can um, uh, train models without having the data ever leave the premise. Um, so now if we understand a bit about the background of split learning, I'm gonna show you what we did in our research. 
Uh, we start with the research question, and that was in the first place if split, uh, split learning was feasible, uh, because every different application has totally different requirements. You can imagine the example of Gboard I just showed you. Um, the phone can process relatively a large amount of data, so it's a pretty pretty strong HD or pretty. Um, a computationally strong edge device, um, but the data sent over the models are maybe pretty small. There's millions of devices. Um, so in healthcare, the, the tables are totally turned. Uh, we only have a few institutions that are probably uh, collaborating on a single project. Uh, the data is really large and the models are probably also gonna be really large. So that's why we wanna show feasibility of split learning. Uh, and our um, our methods are to build a split learning test bed to apply these four applications that you can see in my background and to check certain performance parameters. And we checked for um, inference performance. So do we need more or, uh, or, or equal amount of training when compared to centralized training? Um, um, or, or sorry, that's that's convergence rate. Uh, inference performance is, of course, the uh, performance of uh, making predictions in the end. Uh, do we lose quality compared to centralized training when using split learning? Um, the third one is computational requirements. Um, that's similar to the explanation I just gave about uh, phones being strong or computationally strong edge devices. Um, how much compute would a hospital need to collaborate? Uh, because I'm going to give a big hint, it's going to be lower than uh, doing all the computation on yourself because part of the uh, network is now centralized. Uh, and uh, lastly, uh, we calculate the computation, computational overhead because we're sending data around. We want to know if it's feasible to send these large amounts of medical data over. Um, so we can calculate this communicational cost by um, having these four problems and computing the size of the features that we're sending over. Uh, and we can also compare that to federated learning. Um, I always know, I hear that I lose the half of my audience with, uh, with the first formula. So we're gonna quickly move forward and show some more graphs. Uh, this is uh, inference performance. And um, uh, we can see uh, well, on the top, you see inference performance, and you can also show inferred um, convergence rate. Um, basically, we try to show if there's any correlation between uh, an increased amount of um, participating institutions and the performance that we're getting. And for um, all of these in, uh, examples, uh, there didn't really seem to be a strong um, uh, correlation between uh, the two. And uh, so the, so here are the, are the uh, uh, our rows for the results. Uh, and lastly, the computational requirements. Um, because we're now doing part of the training centrally, we can uh, lower computational requirements um, on the uh, participating institution. Uh, the computational cost is relatively high compared to federated learning. You see that in the left column, which is, uh, for example, for the Chexpert data set, which was um, chest x-ray, uh, 350 times higher. Um, but Due to the fact that internet speeds are pretty high at hospitals, we expect it actually not to be a, a bottleneck in the training. Um, in the training, so our conclusions are that um, split learning can train without losing performance. So that's no compromise. Uh, it lowers computational requirements for hospitals, and uh, communication. So sending all the data over is not going to be a hurdle. Um, so. Now that we've shown that in theory, split learning is gonna be feasible, um, our next steps would be to show that it's also practical. Um, we, um, um, because just uh, having a very controlled environment is easy, uh, but having several hospitals collaborate is actually a next more practical uh, problem. And that was my presentation. I hope you got a bit more excited about split learning. Um, and I wish you a very good day.